Hey, folks, welcome to InTheMoneyStocks.com's intraday analysis video brought to you by the creators of proprietary price, pattern, and time methodology. Learn the PPT strategies and profit for life. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at In The Money Stocks. Dot com. All right, guys, into the action we go today on this Thursday, May 23rd, 2013. Markets are sharply off their lows. We had a big-time gap down this morning on the back of yesterday's major reversal in the U.S. markets. And then overnight, Japan jo dropped over 7%. The Japanese Nikkei collapsing over 7% or about 1,000 points last night. And again, their market, take a look at the EWJ, which is the ETF that tracks the Japanese markets. I mean, if you look at where this thing has gone, it's even more extended than the U.S. markets. Look at the low back in mid-November. You were at down around the 875 level. And from that point on, you ran all the way straight up in about six months to a high of... 12 and a half. I mean, that is a humongous move, folks. Absolutely humongous move. I mean, you're talking about almost a 50% move in their market. So, you know, this is where you get into bubbles. And, and you know, it's always an interesting factor when people say, oh, it's not a bubble. But honestly, it is. Anytime you see a market that goes straight up, it's not a healthy market. And that's why I've said things about the U.S. markets in the upper ranges here. And this is why you get the violent moves like we saw yesterday in the markets where we were up substantially and then reversed the moves. All right, Japan obviously dropping 7 plus percent, you know, that's signaling that that market was overpriced by a significant amount. And when people went for the exits, they ran fast. Okay, now the U.S. markets, if you look at the U.S. markets, you're not as extended, but you're still very, very extended here. And that's why you have these dramatic corrections. Now, in the short term, the markets are off at their lows substantially because you still have a buy the dip mentality. All right. People are saying, okay, you've had a nice pullback off yesterday's highs. You can buy this market. That's a market that you know is still in a bubble mentality because you still have the Fed backstopping it. People are still willing to jump in. All right. And again, they'll probably push the market up around this holiday we have. Remember the three day weekend coming up. So most likely you'll see the markets float up into that. But again, you have to be on your concern side now as we've started to see cracks in the glass emerge. All right, the Fed yesterday, Bernanke basically saying, you know, talking out of both sides of his mouth, but ultimately saying, you know, he is going to possibly start to withdraw a little of the quantitative easing, the QE, uh, in June, maybe July. And if that does end up happening, this market's drug is going to be taken out of its arm, and it no longer will have the same momentum or ability to really prop itself up. All right, and that's the thing is when you have a market like this that goes up on nothing more than the Federal Reserve, you know, printing money, that is a problem. All right, that is no doubt a problem. And again, short term, maybe the markets bounce back. But longer term, look at the Japanese markets down 7% in one day. I mean, what would happen if the U.S. markets dropped 7% in one day? I mean, it's very possible. Now, granted, we're not quite as extended as them. They're printing even more money than we are, but everyone's printing at this stage. The Fed's been printing trillions of dollars, and they plan on continuing it, and to some extent printing that type of money. Now, for us as traders, we don't really care. Swing trader, day trader, that's what I do. I'm, I'm in and out of my swing trades in a few days to a week or two. I'm in, in and out of my day trades in seconds or minutes, and, and that's fine. We'll make money either way, but I do feel for the average American who invested, you know, last month or, or just last week, you know, put money to work because the market seems to go up forever. And that's their mentality for investing when they say to themselves, oh, well, the market's just going up, so I'll get in. Well, as soon as they, you know, as soon as you hear that, it's usually near the top. And, and I just worry about them because those are the ones that always get screwed. All right, the big institutions are the ones that they're, they bought in at the 2009 lows and now they're selling into these amateurs buying. And then the amateurs just get screwed and when the market drops, they sell at the lows and the market bounces. It's just a you know continually cycle. It's a cycle that repeats over and over. It happened in 1999, 2000 with a tech bubble. The, the little guy got in late, got burned, lost 50% or more of his money. Well, the institutions made out like a banshee, and then the same thing happened in 2007 when the financial star crisis started to, to happen. The institutions were the first one out, and the, the small investor, were the, they were the last ones out in 2009, really, at the lows. So, you know, you just feel for those people, but again, you got to learn. I mean, bottom line is, hopefully they're getting burned, and then they ultimately learn and, you know, find, find people who know what they're talking about who are going to tell it to them straight. Like we do here at In The Money Stocks, where we're just going to tell them the basic facts. I mean, listen, you just call a spade a spade. Market's overbought. We know that. Therefore, yesterday's reversal really not that shocking. In fact, it made us money. 
Okay. All right. Markets again right on a technical basis into the 50 MA. First hit of the 50 since yesterday's epic collapse. Um, if we get above that, you have gap fill right here, and then you have blue trend line 200 MA right here. Now remember, Friday's tomorrow, which is right before a holiday, so be aware of that. That could end up pushing uh, this market in a sense, kind of. Uh, into a holiday mode of vo light volume. And then next Tuesday, when we come back from the holiday, we'll see if we have our 20th straight up Tuesday, which if it's light volume, we will. If we have any panic over the weekend, then you could see some major selling on Tuesday. All right. Uh, going to a couple different things. The dollar today is getting hammered after some big gains the last couple days. Dollar's down sharply here. That's a nice drop on the dollar. Uh, gold today is up decently, bouncing back. And the gold, again, has just been a wild trade. Absolutely wild trading vehicle recently, and it most likely will continue to be such as we t kind of diversify and, and understand where the Fed is going to be in, where they're going to be out, where they're going to stop printing money or print more money. Uh, more than likely, I still see gold going down quite a bit more before it bottoms out, maybe as low as 120 on the GLD. It's at 134.5 right now, but uh, we'll take it one step at a time, obviously. SLV up 30 cents, a little bit of a bounce back there. The USO is flat on the day. Great move off the lows on that and a move back up. Couple stocks to watch. JPM down 24 cents. Nothing doing here. Goldman Sachs down a buck 58. Well off its lows. Apple has been one of the stronger stocks today, up a dollar 75. Basically been up. It gapped lower, and then really within the first 30 minutes went positive, and then it's pulled back. But it still held up very, very nicely. And I think it's still riding that uh, testimony from Cook. Uh, in front of Congress that was actually, he, he actually had some gusto there and just kind of said what it was and, hey, said, listen, you know, yeah, we do it. We hide our, you know, money and stuff offshore and we don't pay taxes, but you know what? You guys let it be legal, so therefore it is what it is. Deal with it. You know, suck it, in other words, you know. It's kind of like that. So, in any case, that's the way it, it kind of played out there, and I think Apple's running, uh, had a couple decent days off of that. Hewlett-Packard had good earnings yesterday after the bell. That stock is having a very nice day in a pretty ugly market, up $3 and change. And uh, going to Google, Google's down 7, had a nice fall yesterday as well. That stock was overbought. Chevron's up 28 cents. Exxon is down a little bit on the day. And that's really where we sit right now, folks. So solars, for the most part, are down. We have uh, first solar down 93 cents. JA solar down 17 cents. There are some solars bouncing today, though. Solar City up $2.40 here on the day. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to mention. I mean, I think the big thing for today is to watch where this market closes and then to understand the holiday. You know, if you have holiday volume, you're going to have light volume. They can most likely push the markets up. If they push the markets up, then, you know, you can obviously have a small uptick. The big question is on the spiders, if we go back to the SPY, and you're pulling back off the 50, so nice little pullback. I'm watching to see if we close below the low of yesterday, which would be bearish, or if we close above, then in the next couple days, do they just do an inside bearish pattern before another sell-off? And that's really what you've got to answer analyze now as we watch this market very very closely all right uh let's see what else we have here anything else on the radar i think that's for the most part it baidu's down a dollar today uh caterpillar let's take a look caterpillar's down 64 cents deer is up 26 cents so a little bit of an uptick on deer spg which is simon properties down about two dollars nice fall nice fall on simon properties there very nice fall um, CRUS is down sharply after lowering long-term margin expectations. The stock is taking a beating. I've scalped it multiple times. I think I've scalped this three or four times today. Let me remove the line here so it doesn't cloud the candle. But, yeah, it's been a good scalping stock today. Um, it was earlier in the morning in the chat room, intraday stock chat, where we scalped it a few times. There was a couple even numbers that it pierced, and you got some good bounces. Uh, so very nice there. But ultimately, you are finding some support right down here. You can tell a lot of people would look to this double bottom for that support. But... Um, let me take a look. If we zoom out, you know, one thing that's catching my eye is if you take this little low pivot and you draw it to this trend line right here, that's really where you start to get into that little area of support. So that sloping up trend line is very interesting to me. You also have this one right here, which is kind of the same area. And that's kind of, you know, you're right on top of that area of support, and that's why uh, CRUS is getting a little bounce. Okay, although, again, it's only up 30 cents off the lows. I actually think it will ultimately go lower, but uh, it is having a nice little bounce these days. All right. So that's what we have there in tune with the markets on CRUS. Any other stocks? Chinese stocks are super hot. Take a look at Hi-Ho, H-I-H-O here. Well off its highs, but I mean a monster move up there. Uh, other stocks moving. One of my favorites, STV. This is a low-end China. I think it's a no-brainer for further upside here. Uh, really could get his mojo going and run. HOSL, SCOK. -S I mean, these are all Chinese stocks. Here's uh, CNIT, another China stock. Just having a good day. So it's interesting how the Chinese stocks are actually doing better today. And it'll be interesting to see if they, uh, you know, play out pretty nicely here. 
All right, guys, so that's what we have today. I'm going to step aside, get back to trading in the intraday stock chat. Have a good rest of the day. Come join us at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Profit with the pros. Learn the proprietary PPT methodology. And again, you know, make money in this market. There's plenty of money to be made. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.